Um, we, I want to talk to you guys about fullness of God. So when I heard that, there's actually, there was a moment, um, there was a woman who was like a mom to me in Reading. She got diagnosed with cancer. They began to explain what it was going to be for her to get the surgery and have things replaced and kind of how she would live afterwards. And she actually looked at the doctor at the time and said, man, that, that is not God's promise of fullness of life. I don't think I want to settle for that. Now, I'm not saying that's what everybody needs to do when it comes to their diagnosis, but what I'm saying is that stirred it in me of like, oh, wait, my expectation of fullness of life needs to be what God says fullness of life is, not this limit of what life kind of brings to us, you know? And that started, I mean, that was when I was like 22. I just was wrestling with this like, wow, she didn't settle. She wasn't like, well, that'll heal me, but I will be, mar- you know, I will be less than I want to be. I will have issues for the rest of my life from this, and I don't want that. That's not what God's promised me, and I was, it really shook me, and I have wrestled with it for a long time, like, Lord, I want to know what is your fullness? What does that mean, and how do I get it? So Ephesians 3.19 says, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I'm like, okay, okay. So know the love of Christ, and we will be filled. Well, what is fullness of God? And I will say I share this because um, this is my journey. I own this. I come with some authority on this because I have fought hard through some battles, and I have won, and I have got victory. So I can come to you and say, hey, it is possible to fight and to have fullness, that you do not need to settle for things in our life that will hold you down. Or that, you know, I, um, I don't know, some of you may have heard my story with anxiety. I have walked through some awesome, awesome experiences with anxiety. No, they're awful. If you've ever experienced anxiety, it's horrific. Um, but I, my, whole, my family has a long history of anxiety, like grandparents, dad, um, and it just was one of those, like, this is just who we are. We're an anxious family, and I was like, well, I'm pretty sure that's not what God says I am, and that's, when I sit with him, he doesn't look at me and go, well, everyone else gets peace, but you get to feel terrified, I'm going to leave you with that. No, that is not his promise over my life. That is not fullness of life. But that doesn't mean I just sit and wait for God to show up and remove the anxiety from me. And I feel like a lot of us Christians just sit with our stuff, sit with our thing that's like, well, this is what my family struggles with. So until God comes and takes it away, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, well, what's your responsibility in going after the fullness of God in your life? I worked so hard to get victory over anxiety. And for me, I, I'm like, in church, I, I have valued bringing this to the church because when I was going through it, all I ever heard was these stories of like, and then I got prayer. And out of my belly came this cry. And then I never was worried again. And I was like, I would love for that to happen. Who would like to pray for the thing to come out of my belly? And it never, it never happened for me, but I went, let me tell you, I got a lot of prayer. I will take anybody and anything when I was going through that. I went to counseling. I talked to doctors. I did the work. I wrestled with the lies that I believed. I found the truth in the Lord and I walked it out. Now that doesn't mean I, guys, it's real life. I still have days I feel anxious. It's not like, oh my gosh, and I've never feared again. (laughs) Never again. Nothing worries me. I don't know. 
what you guys worry about. My life is full of perfect peace. No, but I use my tools. I know. I know the truth, and it does not own me. It doesn't get to land. I will not walk in that as my truth. That is not my truth. But it takes the work. You cannot wait for somebody else to do it for you. Nobody's prayer is going to be the answer for you. You have to be the answer for you. You and the Lord. What does the Lord say to you? And you have to walk that out. What is the promise he's spoken over your life? You have to walk it out. Have you ever gone to church and you know you got breakthrough? Worship was amazing. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm changed. He did something in me. I am changed. And then you leave. And then like two days later, you're like, huh, it didn't stick. Back to my old, I feel sad again. I feel overwhelmed, which is real. But what I'll say is that is yours to go, wait, why? Why is this back? What do I do? Lord, how do I walk this out? That breakthrough that you brought to me was real. So how do I walk it out? And you have to walk that out. It's not just go from service to service to feel better. You've got to, in between, you got to fight. Like, no, this is who I want to be. I want to have breakthrough. So I have to believe it and I have to walk it out. Um, there's a few verses that, like, as I look through for the promises of God um, that, that matter to me. And there's going to be different ones that matter to you. Like, ooh, that's what I want. I want that. And I encourage you, get in your word. Read what he says is available to us. And when you read something, you're like, I want that. Take it. Lord, how do I walk in this? What is holding me back? What lie is holding me back from getting to walk in what you have for me? Mine, you know, Proverbs talks about peace that passes all understanding. So when I read that, I was like, oh, wait, that means no matter what my brain is telling me, my emotions are telling me, no matter what a doctor has told me, no matter what situation I am facing, I can have his peace. That's like hard to fathom when you are wrapped up in your own thoughts. But that is the promise that is out there if we fight for it. Psalm 91 is like my psalm. I think he wrote it for me. I'm sorry for you all. You can enjoy it too, though, but it's mine. Um, at the end, it sa- you know, I'm summarizing the last two verses. It says... Um, when we set our love upon, upon him, he will. Yeah. And it talks about what he will do. And he will give you long life. He will sustain you. He'll be with you. No harm will become you. And I'm like, wow, all I have to do is love him. And when I love him, he, he, he promises this. Like, what? Like, that's for me. Why am I living in fear and thinking something other than So, if he's promised this to us, why are so many of us not walking in freedom? And this is not a condemning thing at all, because let me tell you, I still got stuff that I'm walking through. I'm not like, hey, I got it all, guys. Fullness is here. Every day I walk in perfect fullness of God, and um, you guys should just watch me. I've got perfect joy, health, happiness. It's all here. And I don't have to do anything. No, I'm like, it's a journey. It's wrestling. I, I, I value now the wrestle with the Lord of what does this look like and how do I do it? Lord, what do you have for me? What's the truth in this situation? How do I um, not compare myself to other people? How do I not live insecure? How do I not be angry? You know, like that deep anger that rises up that for some people... That runs you. That doesn't have to run you, but it's work. It's work. And it's okay. You shouldn't feel shame. Like, we all have our stuff, you guys. We all have something we are working through. Or if you're special like me, we have multiple things we're working through. (laughs) I did. This is a little gift that first service didn't get. There is one thing I'm not going to work on. I've decided it's okay. I... I am completely okay that I um, will not swim in the lake because a shark will eat me. (laughs) 
I'm not, I'm not going to work on that. <laughs> Banning thing is ashamed of it. He tells me, he literally, guys, this is what it's like to be married to a strong Banning. I don't even know how to describe him. Um, he, I, my kids really like to knock me off a paddleboard. Mostly, oh, sorry, hair in my mouth. Mostly because of um, my response is utter panic. Because at any moment, the shark will get me. If it's not a shark, it's any underwater. You guys, you can't see. You don't know what's down there. You all are risking everything. It could swallow you in one moment. And he's like, he literally, he's standing over watching me flail. I keep my legs and arms up because if they drop, that's when they'll take you. So I'm flailing, the legs are up, I'm screaming to get back on the paddleboard. My kids are rolling because they're evil and I didn't do a good job. And Banning is like, CJ, mind over matter. Can you not just get it together? Mind over matter. I'm like, no. There are bad things in here and I will die if I fall in again. And I refuse to believe otherwise. So this is something, guys, I'm okay with. That's the only thing I'm okay with. And I actually think the Lord's fine. He's like, I gave you, I've, people make pools, CJ, you'll be okay. You're not missing out. Um... There's a few lies that I want to throw out to you guys that I think can be just easy ways that you stop yourself from going after the fullness of God. Number one, you don't believe in yourself because you don't know what he says about you. It's really simple. Get with him and believe him. Even It doesn't matter if your feelings are like, that's not true. He, he knows better, guys, than you do. Um, I think some people don't push themselves to grow because they think they've got it all together. Wait till a train hits you and then you'll be like, oh, maybe I don't. Um, and I think it's pride. If you think you don't need to grow, it's probably pride, guys. Um, and, and you're living a life of like, you don't need him. We always want to stay in a spot of we need the father. We need him to be constantly speaking into us. I don't want to grow stagnant, you guys. I don't want to go around the same mountain year after year. Like, oh, man, same problem. Like, uh, it may be slow, but I want to know I'm at least moving a little bit up, you know? Like, I I just want to know I'm not staying in the same spot. Um, I think another one is, is we believe the story that we tell ourselves that we think other people think about us. And you make that your truth. And you don't actually even know what they are thinking, but you've created a storyline and you believe it. There's a whole lot more out there that I think hold people back and I would just challenge you. What, what am I believing? What is that thing that I, I, I let trump what the Lord says? Um, so I have a, a gift of a story. Banning prefaced it last week that you wouldn't want to miss this. So it's a little glimpse into the chaos of me. My son, um, have you guys seen like the promposals out there? So it was homecoming and he was going to ask his girlfriend to homecoming and he was going to dress as Batman and he was going to say, he, he told me I got it wrong for service. If I'm Batman, I'm robbing your heart for homecoming. I don't know. Something <laughs> great like that. And um, so we ordered a Batman suit. You know, if you're going to be Batman, you got to be Batman good, head to toe, Batman. And I, I have to preface, um, Banning and Raya weren't home. So they are like the common sense of the family. (laughs) And it was just me, Lake, and Ellie, who are similar personalities and don't... We need Banning and Raya sometimes. We have a lot more fun when they're not around, but... um, But we, 
break things or, um, you know, do things that we are embarrassed of later. Um, so, Lake it does have a bit of banning in him, so he starts second-guessing if he feels safe and comfortable enough to wear a full Batman costume. And now he's like, I think I'm just going to wear the headpiece, Mom. And I'm like, what? No son of mine is going to go halfway for this. Like, you're all Batman or no Batman. Like, why are you even doing this if you're not going to go big? And he's like, I don't know. I feel pretty embarrassed, you know. Ellie goes, Mom, like, how about mom dresses up too in the Power Ranger costume? And she goes, with you. And he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, the, yeah, let's do that. Like, I'll dress in the Power Ranger costume. And Ellie goes, ooh, I'll dress in the chicken suit. And I was like, yeah. This is a great idea. Okay, we're going to be Batman, Yellow Power Ranger, and a chicken, and we're going to ask your girlfriend to homecoming. And once again, see, Banning and Raya aren't there to go, guys, how does that make any sense? Why are you dressing up at all? Like, don't do this. So I get out the Yellow Power Ranger suit, it is a morph bodysuit, just to be clear. It's yellow. A morph bodysuit is a skin-tight suit that goes from your toes and zips all the way over your head. Okay? I looked good. That suit was made for me. I tried to convince my daughter that I should wear the chicken suit which was a big, puffy chicken suit that fills with air. That feels like that's the suit I would have been more comfortable in. My daughter says, no, Mom, you're the Yellow Power Ranger. And if you know Ellie, you don't fight. She's a little scary. So I was like, okay, so here I am in the tightest bodysuit known to man. And Lake and I are choreographing our fight in the kitchen we're throwing fake punches, kicks, so this is the plan. Ellie's going to go out in the chicken suit and hold the sign that Lake made. And then, for some reason, the yellow Power Ranger is not going to like that and will attack the chicken and try to steal the sign. Serious. We made a Batman signal out of a flashlight. So when I attack the sign, the Batman signal goes... And out Batman comes to fight me and then ask his girlfriend to homecoming. This is the plan. So we're um, getting there. Lake is more and more nervous as this is happening because Lake does have a small bit of banning in him and maybe some self-awareness. Okay. Ellie does not. She's a lot like me. We're like, what? Who wouldn't want to be in a yellow Power Ranger suit in the middle of a neighborhood as people are coming home from work? You're like, why well, would you want to do this? Anyway, it's dark, and somehow something is happening. This neighborhood is filled with kids from Lakes High School. Something has gotten out because there's just lines of cars coming home. And we're like, huh, this is awkward. Let's try to wait for the crowds to dissipate before we walk the street because we parked around the corner so that she wouldn't see our car. Anyway, so we go, we come, and but when I put the morph bodysuit on, when I got to the neighborhood, I didn't get it right on my head, so I couldn't see right. The eye holes were kind of down here, and it was dark, which really went from like I practiced the fight in the kitchen to in the dark. So we get there, the chicken holds the sign, I attack the chicken, Lake comes out, we fight, but it wasn't a very good fight um, because we couldn't see each other. And he then asks his girlfriend homecoming and all is good. I have a gift for you. No one has seen this before. No other service I've been at has seen this. But look, I have a picture of... There I am attacking the chicken. 
right? I look good. Banning wouldn't let me wear it today. Just a gift for you all. Anyway, the whole point of that story is the next day I was talking to a friend and I was telling her the story and she looks at me and this was not a bad question. It was actually very like sweet, sincere. She's like, do you not have any shame? (laughs) And I was all, I guess I don't. (laughs) But then I said, but um, I've worked hard not to have that shame. I, I've worked hard not to be worried that my body didn't look perfect in a morph body suit. And I'm 47, dressing up in a morph body suit with a chicken walking down the street for a homecoming ask. And I will say, like, uh, it was a great moment for me to look and go, oh my gosh, that's a victory I have. That's a victory I have because I was not at all worried what other moms would think, what other kids would think. I was like, my son is going to remember for the rest of his life. (laughs) Oh, your mom didn't dress in a Power Ranger suit for you? Sorry. (laughs) My mom did. (laughs) And yeah, because my dad wasn't home to tell her that was not a good idea. Um, (laughs) Without me, banning would be so boring. Come on. Come on. He needs me. Um, Even though he has to clean up all the gross stuff from everything I do. Um, All that to say, to me, that is so much more a picture of fullness of life than trying to keep everything safe where you don't have to face things that may embarrass you, hurt you, cause pain, cause anger, because you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to manage it. You don't know how to get freedom. And I, I want to, I just want to speak because I know, I know the challenge of fighting with something and it can feel so defeating if you are sitting here and you've been battling for years and you are like, thanks a lot because I haven't got freedom yet. And I just want to say that is not what, this is to encourage you to keep going. Just keep going. Just don't stop. I mean, there were so many days I just felt like I'm laying in a pit and I just had a picture of like the Lord, like, just don't stay there. It's not bad that you fell in the pit again. Just don't stay there. Just keep getting up. Just keep walking through it. Like it's hard, but it is not your forever. And there is a promise at the end that you can get to it. Just don't settle for this is who you are or this is your life. There is more for you. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I feel pretty strong about um, just being a leader who fights to be whole. And um, that when I stand here, I'm able to look at you guys. When I sit with somebody and they share their story, and I can look at you and go, oh, I am believing that this is going to end for you. I just want you guys to know I mean it because I have been there. And, and when the new fight comes up, because, man, the new things stir up, and I'm like, man, I already beat one. I feel like it's unfair that I have so many. <laughs> but I don't want to be that person that every time you talk to me, it's the same thing, because I'm not owning my life. I want you guys to know that Jesus promises you fullness, but you have to partner with him. You can't sit in that seat and wait for it to happen. You have to partner with what he has promised you. You have to go after it. You have to, whatever it looks like, is it being physical? Is it talking to somebody, getting with a therapist? Whatever it looks like, go after it. Don't settle for this. This is not a picture of fullness of life. Um, I have just a few tools for you guys to walk this out that I have found. This is 
the thing I go back to every time. And number one would be, um, you need to know the Holy Spirit. And um, I know for me, I was raised, I really understood Jesus. I really understood God and the Holy Spirit. I feel like um, I was taught that the Holy Spirit was like a blanket. And so that's all I thought it was. He was a blanket. I didn't really know how to talk to a blanket, though. So I had to learn. What is the, who is the Holy Spirit? And what does that mean when people say walk with the Holy Spirit? I had to learn how to um, connect, build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the reason why it's important is because the Holy Spirit points things out to you that we don't see ourselves. That when you are in the midst of doing something that you've always done, and all of a sudden you get a nudge, it's like, hey, did you know that... uh, that anger outburst is because you're scared. You know, you just have like a, oh, no, it's because I'm rightfully angry because they are idiots. And that's why I'm angry. No, actually, you're scared. And I can help you deal with that. And you get that moment, and now it's your responsibility to walk that out. Okay, I've got something there I got to deal with. Lord, how do I deal with it? Who, do you have somebody for me to talk to? How do I walk this out? If you don't know how to walk with the Holy Spirit, ask somebody. The prayer team is here. Get them to pray with you. Like, there is no shame. We all have stuff. And we all want, I just want to say as a church, we want breakthrough for everybody. So if you don't know, come ask us. Let's walk through it. And I might not know your answer. We'll find somebody. Like, that should be what community looks like. How do we help each other? Right. Um, the sec- second thing I would say is you got to have people. Get your people. Find covering in your life. You do this because these are the people that will speak truth to you. Yes. These are your, your accountability that will call you when you're like, um, hey, I'm choosing to no longer walk this way, but it's going to be hard. And then the next day, they see you making the same choices to take you right back down that path. And they're like, hey, wait, didn't you just say you wanted freedom there? Why are you going back? you got to have those people. And, and you have to actually be willing to listen to them because it doesn't count if you have them and then you still think you're wiser than them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it has to be people that you respect and honor and will actually listen to. Um. Thirdly, you need to know how to fight. You need, oh, you need to know your weapons. For me, um, I'm pretty simple, actually. That's okay. That's okay. I'm pretty simple. I um, my relationship with the Lord. I keep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like I always know the exact words to say, and I don't think the Lord cares. You know, when fear comes on me, I'm just like, oh, fear! You cannot be here in Jesus' name. I don't have the magic prayer. I just know he promised that fear is not mine. So I can tell it to go. I can speak truth. I am not going to be someone that is bound by fear. So I use, that is one of my weapons. I speak truth all the time. So if you see me in the grocery store and I'm talking to myself, just reminding myself of the truth of God. And I would encourage you guys, if he speaks a promise over you, you speak it right back out loud until you believe it. That was why when I was really going through anxiety, I just spoke it out loud until the rest of me believed it. Because my feelings, I would say it out loud, and I was like, well, that's a lie, CJ. And I was like, wait, I'm going to keep going until I line up with what the Lord says over me. Um, And the fourth one, I need music accompaniment for. (laughs) I cannot do the fourth point without the worship team. Becky's going to play. That'll be wonderful. It's really going to be anointed when that happens. Perfect, perfect. I would like her to sing also. Um, The fourth point is um, you got to give out. Because when you are going through something, or just naturally in life, it's so easy to be so focused on ourselves, right? 
It's like we can just stare at our own belly button all day long, like, woe is me. This battle is so hard, or my job situation is so difficult, or nobody sees me. I'm alone in the world. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. And I don't know about you, but I've never gotten breakthrough when I'm sitting there just thinking about myself all the time. So I will say, give out. Go pour into somebody else. If it's taking somebody to coffee, if it's go giving your money, whatever it is that is giving of yourself, that is kidding your focus off of you to something else. We took a group of teenagers to um, Tijuana, and we um, took them to the dump because there are families that live in the dump, and we brought water and food and supplies for them. But so these teenagers are watching as the dump trucks would come in and the families would race to be the first one at the dump truck. Sorry, the hair is really struggling today. Um, To pick through to find the best things that were in the dump truck. And those teenagers all got a different perspective. They went home changed. They went home like, you know what, the things that I thought were so big are not so big now. And I just want to encourage you. I remember going when the anxiety had me so heavy. And one of the things that actually brought me breakthrough is I was sitting in a park and I watched other people do life. And I was all, well, they're okay. I feel like the world is crushing in on me, but it's not for them. They look happy. I wonder if I could be happy. Like it was like really like just simply watching life happen outside yourself changed the view of like, wait, that's right. This is what I'm going for. I got to keep fighting. I got to keep moving. So give out. Don't be, don't settle. Don't be so focused on yourself that you miss what God's doing. Um, so I want to leave you guys also with one question because I think this holds us back is who are you waiting to approve of you and who you are besides him to go change. Like, I feel like sometimes we're waiting for that. Like, somebody look at you and go, you are worth it. You should fight for freedom. But what has the Lord said over you? Who has he called you to do? Has he called you to be strong? Has he called you to be brave? You don't need anybody else to come and tell you that. Go do it. Go after it. I encourage you guys this Mother's Day to leave and and think about this. Dive into it. Go for all he has for you. It is work, but it is worth it on the other side. I want to be a woman that is proud of the life I lived. That I know I experienced all of his fullness that I could get. And I want to encourage you guys, it's available to you.